So I spent a week with the 2023 Asus Republic of Gamers Strix Scar 17. And I must say, this thing is a beast. But in this video, we're gonna talk about some things that I like, some things that I don't like too much, and then we'll see if this is the right laptop for you. Now, first and foremost, I absolutely think that this laptop packs a huge punch. Now it is around the $3,000 price point. So I would hope that it would pack a punch, but just look at these 3D modeling benchmarks. In Autodesk 3DS Max, we scored 349 points. For PTC Creo, 424. For Autodesk Maya, 557. And for SolidWorks, even though this is a GeForce RTX GPU, and SolidWorks normally likes workstation GPUs, we're still getting a 157, which has almost as good of a score as a workstation GPU. So very impressed with the performance out of this laptop. Now this does come with the coveted RTX 4090 GPU, so it is a beast, um, but good to see this laptop performing so well because even a 3090 from last year wouldn't even get close to those results for 3D modeling. So really, really good results. If you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of the Strix Scar, you can head down in the description below and click that link. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, the next thing that really impressed me with this laptop is the color gamut range. We had a 100% sRGB, 90% Adobe RGB, and 100% DCI-P3. Now, to me, this is rare for a gaming laptop with this much performance. Normally, if you get this much performance, they strap on a pretty crappy screen and just say, hope for the best, man, or well, man. And they didn't do that with this laptop. Now, I will say that the brightness wasn't great. It was 354 nits at full brightness, but like I said, the color gamut range and the color accuracy at 1.03 Delta E was great. So the screen really stands out as something to be reckoned. Now, the next thing I really appreciated, although this is a 17 inch laptop, it wasn't too heavy. I was really surprised. Now you can see the weight and thickness coming up on the screen. As you can see, this is below six and a half pounds. Now, barely below six and a half pounds, but this is a big laptop and it's fairly thin for a huge laptop and an RTX 4090, and it is fairly light comparatively. I mean, you think about comparatively, comparatively. Think about the GT77 Titan. That is a massive laptop and it totes the RTX 4090 so that they fit it into a more compact form factor I'm really digging. Now let's get into 8K video editing because that's one of the things that I'm now starting to test on my channel. We're getting really close with laptops being amazing with 8K video editing. This laptop for 8K B-RAW only dropped 2,927 frames out of the 16,177 total in the project. Last year, there were laptops dropping way more than that for 6K B-RAW. So that this is now becoming an 8K video editing laptop is incredible. 8K red footage only dropped 1,000 441 frames. So really great performance increases out of that RTX 4090 and the Ryzen 9 7945HX. Okay, let's get into a few things that I don't like too much. Earlier I talked about the screen and the brightness was a little bit of a downside. 354 nits of brightness is not necessarily great, especially that at 20% screen brightness, which would be quite dim, we only saw about five hours of battery life out of this laptop for productivity, four hours for streaming video playback, two hours for Photoshop, in one hour and 57 minutes for video editing. So the battery life is definitely disappointing and it's a 90 watt hour battery. So I'm really hoping for more battery, but it's such a big laptop, so much performance and such a large screen, even though it's not super bright, it still sucks a lot of battery. Now, the next thing I thought was odd is the limits of ports. We only have two USB type A's on the left side panel and a headphone jack. And on the right side panel, there's actually no ports. There's no connectivity. You get to the back panel and all you have is two USB type C's, an HDMI and a network port. So we're really limited on the amount of ports we have on this laptop. This really surprised me because it's such a big chassis and there was so much more room for more ports that I was just kind of like, why did they leave them off? So that was a pretty big disappointment for me. More connectivity would have been nice, especially with a laptop with this much performance. Now the next thing that I was not stoked about, and I know a lot of you kind of laugh when I say this because this is a gaming laptop, but if you look at the size of the trackpad compared to how much room here is on the keyboard deck, it would have been pretty easy to put a bigger trackpad on this laptop. Now I know that this is a gaming laptop as I just stated, and a lot of people are gonna use a mouse, but for the flexibility for me as a creator reviewing laptops, I would have loved to see a bigger trackpad on here. 
and it's not a really a great trackpad. It doesn't have a really strong satisfying click. It feels kind of soft and too dampened. And I just don't think it's the best quality trackpad on this laptop. I think if they would have pulled in the X16 trackpad or even the G14 trackpad, just a much better trackpad that integrates well into the chassis and doesn't feel so kind of rickety, I would have been better about that. I mean, just kind of give this a listen real quick. It just doesn't have that really nice, strong, sturdy feel behind it that the X16 and the G14 have. Now, the last thing would be the build quality. I think this laptop really focuses on performance more than build quality, and it shows. I mean, you have a plastic bottom cover, you have a pretty thin and light aluminum material on the top cover, and then you have a plastic keyboard deck. Now, this is a performance focused model. So if you're considering this, it's a great way to save some money by not getting all of the build quality frills, but get that great performance of the RTX 4090, the Ryzen 9 7945 HX, and 32 gigs of RAM without literally sell, having to sell your car to get it. This comes in at around $3,000 and for the performance, it's unbeatable. But do note that you're gonna suffer a little bit of dim screen brightness. You're gonna have slightly lower build materials like the plastic bottom cover and keyboard deck, and your laptop's gonna struggle with battery life. But with this much performance, a lot of laptops are gonna struggle with battery life. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase. Click or tap the screen for more videos about the SCAR or other great laptops for creators. I'll see you here in the next one.